I have a very special guest here with me today. I have Steve from Black Pen Red Pen. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching and thank you gentlemen for the collaboration. If you guys like the video, make sure you guys subscribe to our channels, JPEG Math and also Black Pen Red Pen. Thank you. Okay, let's dive in. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be giving you three problems to have a go at and they'll be closely related. We're going to start with one and then that's going to lead on to the next problem and then that will lead on to the third problem. So let's dive right in with the first one. We want to know, are there solutions to x squared minus y squared equals 6 where x and y are integers? So if there are solutions, what are they? Can we find some? And if there aren't, why aren't there any? Thank you, Jamin, for having me here. Let's find integer solutions to x squared minus y squared is equal to 6, if possible. So let's first assume that it is possible and just do the algebra. And if we enter with contradiction, then it's not possible then, huh? So assume x and y are integers and notice one thing. This is always non-negative like with that because they are to the second power. And we have this minus that is equal to a positive number. So that means x has to be bigger than y. Second thing, because they are both to the second powers, assuming we have a integer solution, then the negative version will also work, right? Because negative squared is pretty much the same thing. So let's just focus on the negative. Let's focus on the non-negative first. Without loss of generality, I will just start by saying x is greater than y and they are both non-negative. Alright, and then let's factor out the difference of two squares, x minus y, x plus y, and for 6, we can also break it down, either 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. And you might be wondering, how about negative 1 times negative 6? It's possible, but here, I have this condition, so that means x minus y must be greater than 0, likewise this has to be greater than 0. So, we're just focusing on the positive pairs. Now, x minus y has to be x, x minus y has to be smaller than x plus y. Let's, let's just come up with some conditions. Case 1, this is smaller than that, so I will just say x minus y has to be 1, and the other one is x plus y is equal to 6. And we can also have the second case, x minus y equals the smaller factor, and then the other one is the 3. And now if we can solve the system of equations in integers, then we have solutions. If we cannot, then we cannot. Then, huh? Here, this and that cancel when you add the equations, and we get 2x equals 7, and we see x is equal to 3.5 which is not an integer, so game over here. Likewise, this, if we add the equations, we get 2x equals 5, x is equal to 2.5. Again, not an integer here, so game over here. So, in fact, this equation has no integer solutions. Amazing, really nicely solved. Okay. Let's up this a little bit. Let's change this 6 here to a positive integer n. So n here is now just an arbitrary positive integer. And now the question is, well, when does this have solutions? So are there any values for n for which this does have solutions? If so, what are those values of n? So we know it doesn't work when n is 6. Are there any values of n for which this does work? So now let's think about the condition on the integer n right here so that the equation will have integer solutions. So first, let's factor out the left-hand side just like what we did earlier. And then I'm, I'm also going to break down n as, let's say a and b. Yeah. And notice a might be 1, or b might be 1, right? Assuming n is a prime, then yeah. But anyway, a and b will cover all the cases. So let's focus on making x minus y is equal to a, and the other one, x plus y, is equal to b. And then we will see that 2x, like they cancel nicely, and that's equal to a plus b. And then here, divide both sides by 2. Now, in order for this to end up to be an integer, 
we will have to think about the following. What plus what divided by 2 is an integer? Well, either we have two odd numbers, because the sum of two odd numbers is even, divided by 2, then we get integer, or we have two even numbers, and when we divide it by, that's still going to be that, right? So either A and B are both odd or both even. Okay, if they are both odd, yeah, if they are both odd, then n is equal to an odd number times odd number, so n is also equal to an odd number. Yeah? Now, if a and b are both even, right here, let's say a is equal to 2 times some integer, let's say k, and let's say b is equal to 2 times some other integer, let's say l. Here, put this back to n, 2k times 2l is 4kl. So the key right here is that n is going to be, let me just write this down, that 2k times 2l, which is equal to 4kl. And kl is meant to be an integer. And as you can see, we have a 4 right here. So that means n is a multiple of 4. Multiple of 4. So in fact, these are the conditions in order for us to end up with an integer solution for that equation. Earlier, n was equal to 6, which is even number, but it's not a multiple of 4. So that's why it didn't have any integer solution. But if you have 24 right here, it will work. So n is odd or a multiple of 4. Yeah, nicely done. So it only works if n is odd or if n is a multiple of 4. Great, let's look at the last problem now. So we've looked at when x squared minus y squared is 6 and generalized that to x squared minus y squared is n. You might ask, well, how could we go another step further? Well, what if we change these squares here? So I'm going to go back to 6, but I'm going to change these squares to cubes. So are there solutions to x cubed minus y cubed equals 6, where x and y are integers? Okay, final round. We will see if we can find integer solutions to x cubed minus y cubed is equal to 6. So the usual business. We will factor the left hand side. This times the difference of two cubes. So we get x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared. And this is equal to 6. Break down 6, but this time let me write it as some number a times 6 over a. Here, a is just a factor of 6. So I'm going to say it's 1, 2, 3, 6. Now, here's the deal. In this situation, when we have the cube, we can actually have negative 1 times negative 6, right? For example, we're like negative 2 times negative 3. So in this situation, I will have plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, plus minus 6. Just keep that in mind. Now, do what we did earlier. I'm going to put this equal to a, and I'll put this equal to that. So x squared plus xy plus y squared is equal to 6 over a. Now we have, again, this assistant of equations. This time to solve this is not so easy, but it's still not so bad. We can move this to the other side. So we have x equals y plus a. And then we can put this into all the x's here. So we have y plus a squared plus y plus a, and then times y, and then plus y squared, and this is equal to 6 over a. And in fact, we have a quadratic equation in terms of y, so let's clean things up a little bit. Expand this, we get y squared plus 2ya, yay, that's kind of cool, and then plus a squared, and then distribute this, that's already as y a, and then we have plus y squared, and let's move this to the other side, so minus 6 over a is equal to 0. Now, let's take a look. We have y squared, another one, and then one more, so 3y squared, and then we have, this is 
two y a and then two y a. So three of them. So plus. Let me write it as three a y. And um, this and this, right? A squared minus six a. So plus a squared minus six over a. And that's equal to zero. And if you don't like fractions, of course you can just multiply everybody by a. But this right here is a quadratic equation already in terms of y. So this is the first coefficient, and then next, and then the constant term. So let's utilize the quadratic formula. We get y is equal to negative b, so it's negative three a, and then plus or minus square root, and then b squared, so we have three a squared. Minus four a and c. Okay, a is three, and then c is a squared minus six over a, and then all over two times that. Okay, so two times three. Now remember, we are trying to find integer solutions. So in this case, when we have a quadratic equation. In order to have integer solutions, we have to make sure that the inside here, inside of the square root, which is the discriminant, it must be a positive perfect square. And remember, these are the possibilities of a. So I will just say, note here. If you expand it, well, let me just write it: three a squared minus four three, and then a squared minus six over a. In fact, I'm just going to leave this to you guys because now the rest of the thing is just you plug in and check, plug in one into all the a's and see if you have a perfect square or not. Likewise, also plug in negative one and then tell you it's not going to work. Likewise, plug in plus minus two into a and then all that stuff. So I'll say this will uh, yeah, this not going to be a positive perfect square perfect square for a equal to our choices that we said earlier therefore unfortunately this equation still does not have integer solutions Amazing. Thank you so much for solving those. I think there were some really challenging problems. I think you did quite well. We're going to leave it there, but I'm actually going to leave you guys as viewers with one problem to, to maybe take this the next step further. We looked at x cubed minus y cubed is 6. What if we do the same thing we did before and change the 6 to n? So when does x cubed minus y cubed equal n have solutions for integers x and y? So for what integers n does that have a solution? So have a think about it. Don't look in the comments straight away. Have a think, have a play. When does that have solutions? We'll finish the video there, but I just want to say one last time, thank you so much to Steve from Black Pen Red Pen for making this collaboration possible. I did a video on one of his channels, so go check it out. A link for that will be in the description below. And on the off chance you haven't heard of Black Pen Red Pen, go check it out. I'll leave a link to that as well in the description. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.